The car and the low speed vehicle involved in that deadly bridal party crash now sit in the lot of a towing company. And it's hard to imagine the impact. But police say the driver who was charged with DUI was going 65 miles per hour when she hit that LSV. Our Conley Grayson saw both of the mangled vehicles today, and we want to warn you the images may be disturbing to some. Sammy never wanted to leave Folly. Yeah. She said that. She said this is her place. That's why Sam and Eric decided to get married on Folly. After their wedding, they headed back to their rental on a low-speed vehicle, but they never made it. This is what the LSV looks like today. Seats detached, the axle connecting the two back wheels nearly broken, and pieces of the bride's beautiful gown stuck in the bumper of the rental car. The bride and groom rode on the back seat, facing the car that hit them. Quick, you know, journey from the venue to their Airbnb for their wedding night. What's going to go wrong? Jamie Lee Komorowski remains in the Alcannon Detention Center. The front left side of her vehicle looks like she hit a wall. The groom and his brother-in-law were seriously hurt and still in the hospital. Laid up with still. gravel stuck in his head, gravel stuck on his leg, on his arms. He's going to be recovering too. And he said to me today, they were having so much fun on the golf cart. Folly Beach Public Safety Department's Chief Andrew Gilreath confirmed the happy couple left on an LSV, not a golf cart. It's an important distinction because LSVs are allowed to be driven at night. Pedestrian, you're in a car, or you're in a golf cart. Uh, if somebody hits you that's speeding, driving drunk or recklessly, then you know there's not a lot of safety features that can protect you from that. Edo Leisure Car CEO Will Harton says LSVs come with more stringent safety features, including headlights, brake lights, turn signals, seat belts, an advanced braking system, and reflectors. Golf carts can be operated within four miles of your home during daylight hours, not on main surface streets. It's meant for more neighborhood riding. Harton says golf carts are better used on the golf course or riding to your neighbor's house. While he says LSVs can be operated on any non-number road under 35 miles per hour. Meanwhile, Sam's family is preparing for a funeral. If she is cremated, we're going to bring her to Folly Beach and that's where she wants to be. Well, Governor McMaster is expected to sign a bill tomorrow that would give South Carolina students the ability to attend private schools with state funding. It's something state legislators says they've been fighting for now for over 20 years. But as our Floriana Boardman tells us, some public school teachers are incredibly disappointed with the school choice policy. It's like a slap in the face to public school educators. And Dorchester District 2 teacher Mary Rita Watson says she's disappointed after both the House and Senate passed the Education Savings Accounts Bill. I just hate to see this, this battle coming up year after year. And I hate to see that, you know, what it does to the public school system and the, those of us in it, it's, it really beats us down. The legislation is now headed to the governor's desk. It would give students a scholarship of up to $6,000 to attend another public or private school. The parent should have the right to send their child to the best school where they believe their child could get the best education. In its first year, the voucher will only be available for 5,000 Medicaid eligible children. But by its third year, the program expands to 15,000 students and it expands the eligibility criteria. The bill's sponsor, Senator Larry Groom, says he hopes the program will eventually reach every K-12 through child in South Carolina. We, we have um, voucher type programs right now in higher education, we have ABC child care vouchers. We have um, um, other um, uh, kindergarten vouchers. We have all sorts of educational vouchers that have all been found to be constitutional. And so we are confident that this will be found constitutional also. While Groom says he sees this as a huge win for school choice, Watson says she doesn't see how this will help student education. When we're just talking a lateral move from public to private, it is. It's a slap in the face. It's like you're not doing a good job, so we're going to take our child here. This bill is designed to help students and families who want to go to another school because they feel like the school where their child is at is not the best place for that child. The city of Myrtle Beach is now no longer offering free beach accessible wheelchairs, meaning disabled and senior beachgoers may have a hard time accessing the beach. And ABC 15's Emma Parkhouse is working for you tonight. She joins us live in the studio with why the city says they've stopped offering the service and how some accessibility advocates are hoping to take action. Emma. 
Jen, Connor, this is a free service that the city has provided for years, but they made the decision to halt lending the beach accessible wheelchairs during the COVID-19 pandemic. That was due to some of those restrictions like social distancing. Now it's actually not returning at all as the city is no longer providing the specialty wheelchairs. Myrtle Beach Public Information Officer Mark Pruis says free beach wheelchairs are a great service, but one the city no longer has the ability to provide. The reason? Lack of manpower. It is a labor intensive service and we do not have the resources to you know, take a chair out to somebody up and down the beach, let them use it for the for the day and then go back and pick that chair up again at the end of the day. That's that's more effort than we have the ability to provide at this point. Crew up pointing to the pandemic and staff resignations as causes for the lack of manpower and with 300 to 1000 requests for the wheelchairs during the summer, it requires a lot of work. Some of those requests come from Myrtle Beach resident Brock Johnson, a quadriplegic who loves the beach but can't access it on his own. Johnson says the chairs are helpful and an important tool to those with disabilities who want to enjoy the beach. Now I just kind of concerned about what we can do to to re come to a resolution for this so people can still get the the chairs johnson works alongside luke sharp a good friend and founder of the adaptive surf project a local nonprofit organization with a mission making beaches accessible to everyone there's options there's ways to do this there's ways to do it cheaply uh and uh, effectively Crua says the city is open to finding new options to lend out beach accessible wheelchairs and Sharp already has a few ideas in mind. They can work with us on putting some beach wheelchairs at the piers because then the beach wheelchairs don't need, to, if they're at a pier, they don't need to be delivered to the beach. An individual sees a pier, shows up, it's a private business mostly, hey, can we have the beach wheelchair and they're on the, they're on the beach with nobody having to, to deliver it or anything. Johnson, Sharp, and the Myrtle Beach City Administrator will be meeting Tuesday afternoon to talk about possible solutions for bringing back those beach accessible wheelchairs. We'll let you know what comes out of their meeting.